is it going to rain tomorrow? In developed countries, we ask this question every day. Should we bring an umbrella to work today or tomorrow? Should we perhaps put in some extra time uh, before we leave from home in case it would rain? In the tropics, we have about one and a half billion small-scale farmers. They ask this question as well every day. But their question is really asking more like, is this a really good day to plant? Or should a big thunderstorm come in and wash away my seeds? Is this a great day to apply my yearly fertilizer? Or will the rain wash away them too? Small-scale farmers generally live on less than $2 per day. That's the UN definition of extreme poverty. They don't know if it's going to rain tomorrow because they don't have a reliable weather forecast. And because they don't know, they do dozens of decisions in their agriculture practices that is the equivalent of rolling a dice uh, with their futures and the futures of their families. Bottom line is that without a reliable weather forecast, it is really, really hard to grow something. So, how could we help 1.5 billion small-scale farmers to help themselves out of poverty? I asked myself that question. And then I thought, well, I'm an atmospheric scientist. I could help them out. I could create a weather forecast that is both reliable and that reaches the small-scale farmers in the tropics. <laughs> Sounds pretty easy, right? <laughs> well, I can tell you, it wasn't that easy. And I would like to share a bit of my story with you. My first challenge was starting a business where I could develop and then later on also deliver the weather forecast to the farmers. This was a totally new path for me. I was an academic. I had read hundreds of articles about how, to, um, how agriculture practices were done in Ghana and how farmers made their decisions. But I was such an academic, so before I landed in Ghana, I thought that the country name was pronounced Zana. Well, my second challenge was that I didn't really know anybody there. And this might sound strange since I've done so much background research and market research about the country, but the conclusion was that I needed to start networking. The fastest way to meet a lot of people was to go to the embassy parties in the capital, Accra. There was only one problem. I didn't really know anybody, so nobody could invite me. So this is how I did. I hired a few local guys, and they sat outside of the embassy residence. And as soon as the party was happening, they would call me, and I would throw up my nicest dress on, put myself in a taxi, and get there as fast as possible. So, I also went for a cross-country journey in Ghana for eight months. I lived in villages. Um, I studied how farmers made their decisions. I talked to everybody I could get hold of, and I observed how they took action. And everything surprised me. Here's what I learned. Small-scale farmers in Ghana had good agriculture practices that they had developed out of experience. But they also made a lot of decisions out of gut feeling, out of religious beliefs, and out of peer pressure. What they really needed was evidence-based information. Most importantly, what I learned was that if Ghanaian farmers could get hold of information that would tell them if it's going to rain tomorrow, or what precip precipitation patterns would happen that month or that season, well, that would really be valuable information for them. But there were two obstacles in order to deliver this kind of forecast. The first obstacle was 
that the weather in the tropics is very different from south of the tropics and north of the tropics. Let me explain. Here in Minnesota, we have warm fronts, we have cold fronts, we have high pressure and low pressure systems. These are large scale systems that you can watch on a satellite move and you can pretty much predict it yourself a few days ahead. But in the tropics, the weather can turn from clear blue sky, like on this picture, to a heavy downpour in a matter of 30 minutes with no visible signs of when it's going to happen. So it is really hard to predict this by conventional forecast technologies. BBC makes a forecast for Ghana, and they're about 39% accurate. Well, I usually tell farmers that they are actually better off by doing the opposite from what the BBC forecast tells them. <laughs> a new kind of weather forecasting approach was needed. The second obstacle was to deliver this forecast in the hands of the farmers. This was really tough because weather, so we couldn't uh, announce this on TV or on radio because we couldn't get it down specific enough to the farmer. The farmers needed to know if the thunderstorm is going to hit their farm, not the capital and not the other side of the village. Also, we needed to find a forecast that they could afford and that they could understand because a majority of these farmers are illiterate or semi-literate. A pretty interesting combination of problems, don't you think? <laughs> well, in order to help to solve this problem, I formed the company Ignatia. Because I really believe that if we could solve this challenge, we could help a lot of people. So here is what I came up with. Better weather forecasts. We started as a group of scientists simulating physics and starting to understand the convective patterns that happen in the tropics that are so different from the weather, what are happening on these kind of temperate latitudes. We started improving the forecast models. It took us about two and a half years, but once it was done, we actually managed to get 84% accuracy compared with the 39% accuracy that was available before. The second part was the pinpoint delivery. We collaborated with the large telecommunication companies, and through them, we got hold of the phone's geo coordinates uh, in order to know where the farmer was actually farming. They don't have smartphones, which meant that we needed to somehow get around this problem and know where the farmer was farming. It is really simple to sign up. It's a short code that would work anywhere in Ghana, Nigeria, or Mali. It costs about four cents per day to receive this information. This cost is almost 2% of the annual cost every farmer needs to put out every year. So it's not so large. Today, we have a bit over 300,000 farmers that are subscribing to this information on a daily basis and paying for it. So how does this work on an individual level? Last year, I met Mohammed here. Mohammed received a seasonal forecast from us. Based on the information that he got, which was that it's going to be a much drier year than usual, he decided to plant eggplants instead of the dry land rice, which his family and his village traditionally did. A month later, he got a monthly forecast from us. And that basically told him that the next two weeks is going to be too dry to plant anything. So he waited, and he planted later, when it was much more likely that rain would come. Finally, he got our daily forecast, and this is how he decided when he would apply his fertilizer out in the field. Fertilizer is the single most expensive input every farmer needs to lay down. 
And in case you miss the day and a big thunderstorm is going to come the day after, everything will be washed away and down in the drain, I guess. He managed to put down his fertilizer where the, where the soil was moist and um, the crop could actually ingest it, which helped him to prepare in his eggplants. While dryland rice failed, the whole village ended up eating Muhammad's eggplants. Based on the information that farmers can get from us, they do better decision making. And this um, becomes about, or, or this is visible uh, by increased yields. On average, a farmer can increase their yields by 50 to 80 percent. That means better food security. It means higher income to fix your roof that is leaking or buying that motorcycle that you always wanted. But it also means climate resilience. Imagine applying this across 340 million people. That is how many live today in West Africa. And now imagine applying this also in South Asia and South America, because that is what we are imagining at Ignatia. So is it going to rain tomorrow? Next time you ask yourself that question, Think about the 1.5 billion people, like Muhammad, that is so dependent on the weather for their livelihoods. There are so many challenges like this to be solved in the developing world. Solving them is about understanding how to apply science and how to deliver the results to the people. Thank you.